What if the French wanted the ambient food? The French have the ignoble distinction of being losers in battle. So why was the French military so preoccupied with eating baguettes instead of fighting the Second World War? Even though this is wholly unfounded in history and truth, and they have one of the greatest military histories of all time, people continue to make fun of them because when they do lose, they lose pretty badly. Apart from their stunningly rapid loss to Nazi Germany or their decisive loss at the Battle of Trafalgar or their loss to the English at the Battle of, of Agincourt and Crecy or their failure to pass by Mexico under Emperor Maximilian's rule during their second French intervention, this French lost spectacularly to the Vietnamese in 1954 at the Battle of Dien Bien Phu. But what if the French had not lost this battle? Why was this battle so critical anyway? For some background, the French colonized the area they called Indochina in the late 19th century. Now, after World War II, the first Indochina War began with the Vietnamese basically telling the French to get out. And they kept bringing in their own supplies to fight the French. The French responded by amplifying their own forces with colonial troops. And they were also supported by the US while China and the Soviets supported the Viet Minh. The war dragged on and on and on until finally, French commander Henry Navarre decided that he would crush the Vietnamese in a set piece battle. He built a new French base in a remote region which threatened Vietnamese supply lines and drew them into a fight. Then he planned that the superior French tech would allow them to easily fly in supplies and artillery compared to the primitive Vietnamese peasants. Essentially, he expected them to act like suicidal jungle men. For months, the surrounding jungle covered mountains were quiet. The Vietnamese were, in fact, secretly disassembling and transporting pieces of artillery throughout the jungle. The French commander underestimated his opponents, and the Vietnamese commander, Vo Yong Gap, blasted the French from his mountainside positions. Once the attack was launched on March 13, 1954, it only took a couple of days to overtake the French airfield, which was the sustenance of the French in the middle of the jungle. As morale began to falter and the Vietnamese continued with their heavy bombardment, many Frenchmen began deserting their ranks and were known as Arras and Nam Yum when they were captured on May 7th along with the rest of the garrison. A French artillery commander named Charles Perrot also committed suicide using a hand grenade since he had failed to destroy the Vietnamese batteries. However, the battle was not always fated to be as decisive as you may have thought. Giap actually began to falter in his offensive due to heavy losses and courageous French defense. Giap was egged on by the Chinese, who wanted the French booted out of Vietnam as soon as humanely possible. The Soviets supplied Katyusha rocket launchers, and the Chinese brought in military advisors to teach the Vietnamese some lessons. This radically increased the effectiveness of the Vietnamese techniques, which until now relied on human waves like Navarre had somewhat foreseen. Siege techniques helped isolate French strong points and the subsequent great loss of the French fortress meant new Prime Minister Pierre Mendes had to sign the Geneva Accords in July 1954 and finally end the First Indochina War. So what went wrong for the French? What if in fact they had won this battle? The fact is, the Vietnamese simply would not have won by their own. They were helped by the Soviets and especially China. China essentially did everything but fight the battle themselves. They supplied weaponry and military expertise and were the key allies to the Vietnamese. Without them, most likely Navarre's plan would have played out and the Vietnamese would have been destroyed by French airplanes. The Americans were paying for most of the French war effort in Indochina by the time of the battle, but they resisted direct intervention on the grounds that it would be seen as an act of war. Little did they know, but it was a loss of the French and their withdrawal that led directly to the communists taking over in the Vietnam War. In actuality, after the Korean War ended and the Chinese were able to devote their full attention to the situation in Vietnam, the French knew that their end was coming. And it was only a matter of time when they were kicked out. It was more a question of when rather than if. The French were not seeking to win in Vietnam, only to leave on favorable terms. Navarre's gamble was to be doomed from the start. Also, the fact that the French were sitting ducks in a valley was not the best of all possible plans, to put it lightly. Really, if I were to list all the things the French did wrong in the Ambient Food, it would take a whole nother video. If the French somehow won at Dien Bien Phu by perhaps fortifying the high ground around the region and with less interference from the Chinese, they would still have to pull off the offensive and pull out of 
into China sooner or later. The French public were growing wary of the seemingly never-ending war and most of the vast regions of Indochina still belong to the rebels. If America, the world's most powerful nation by many orders of magnitude compared to France, failed to secure Vietnam later on, there's simply no way that French humanely could. So the French win a DMB and food in this alternate timeline, and the result? A more favorable peace, for the French at least. Indochina will be much more French today than it is in our timeline. Take a look at the colonies France had in Africa compared to those in Indochina. Well, in Africa, France is swapping dictators left to right, and you can hear people speaking French everywhere. In Indochina, many of the leaders tried to distance themselves from their colonial heritage, and most of the people still spoke their native languages. You can barely tell the French were there anymore, except by passing some old French building that's about to collapse. Indochina would remain in the French sphere of influence, although it would not resemble former French Africa. In Africa, while the French pulled together different groups and artificially created states, in the China there was already a history of indigenous empires such as the Khmer Empire. Therefore, in the China would still be somewhat distant from France. Instead of the communists taking over South Vietnam as they did in our timeline, the entire region would remain affiliated with the West. Cambodia would never suffer the murderous Pol Pot. China would be frustrated in its efforts to support communism there by indirect U.S. intervention. France would never fight the bloody war in Algeria, having learned that a negotiated peace is preferable to useless conflict. As the French Empire peacefully decolonizes, the West and China would drift further apart, unable to see past their differences in the Southeast Asia region, while China would see a threat to the regional hegemony due to Western influence. America and France would strengthen their indirect grip on Indochina. The Vietnam War never happens with the communists stuck in North Vietnam and surrounded by strong Western affiliated states. Overall, China and the West would remain more hostile than they are now, if that was possible. And Indochina would be in the French sphere of influence and not communists. That's all folks. Like and subscribe for more great content. This is Call of the World, signing out.